before those we get to those phone lines, though, I think we have an email question that came in before we start. We'll go ahead and do that to get us off the bat. This is from Jackie. Jackie asks, if your upstairs neighbor allows their hot water heater to leak to the point that your roof falls in and mold damages your home and all the contents in it, besides contacting your renter's insurance company to file a claim, would you have a claim against your neighbor for negligence as well? And Jackie, that's a good question and it's a good example of the potential interplay of first party and third party claims. Uh, sure. Lance, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, potentially you'd have a claim for negligence if you could show there was negligence. Um, a lot of times, one of the issues that may develop from that is when you're making a first party claim, you don't have to establish any sort of liability. You're able to just make the claim to your insurance company and they're responsible regardless of whether your neighbor did anything right. wrong or not and when they if your insurance company then pays you they actually would inherit your right to go after your neighbor if your neighbor had done something improper that it that it led to those damages or you could pursue a direct action against the neighbor if you could establish that they they were knew that the water heater was leaking and didn't correct it didn't take reasonable care or reasonable steps to fix the issue that was leading to that right. to that leak and, and it ultimately damaged your property. And, that, and that's an important thing to remember here is you have a multiple option, at least, at least two main options you can pursue here. You have that contract claim that's your first party claim with the individual company that you've made that agreement with and that is going to be based off of what coverages you have. And you can have scenarios where you may not have as much coverage as you have damages. Sure. So. While your insurance company may pay you for some of your damages, there may be other areas where you have not been made whole. And so those rights of subrogation the insurance company have may not be, they may not completely take your rights if there are additional um, damages. And it's not unusual, for example, for contents coverage to not be as extensive as you need in a loss. And it's something that you really need to discuss with your agent, depending on your personal belongings, to make sure that you have adequate coverage to help you in a situation like this. But uh, as, as Lance mentioned, you've got to make sure and establish that they did something negligent. It's not a strict liability scenario here. Um, so, for example, they had a problem with their plumbing. They were derelict in uh, taking care of it. They let it sit and they let it fester and a bad problem became worse and that led to the leak. If that's the scenario we're dealing with, then you very likely have a negligence claim. And it's important that you put that particular uh, property owner's insurance company on notice and make sure and contact someone like us to ha handle that properly because that can be right. a very, very difficult claim to try to navigate on your own. Sure, and one of the things that was mentioned is about the mold damages mm -hmm. and as, as wow. you pointed out, that's one of the things where oftentimes your insurance policy will not provide as broad a coverage as what it would in, in right. just like a windborne claim or something like that. So, so that's very likely something that is gonna have to be pursued on a third party right. liability claim. So make sure um, Jackie and you fully explore that um, and that's something that you know, a lot of people dealt with, not in, in this kind of scenario, but the first party claim with, with the hurricane damage we had in Michael. We got, unfortunately, another weather system that's coming through now. It looks like it's going to uh, stay away from us, but uh, it's important to make sure and assess those policies, make sure you have the coverage, because if you're talking about a hurricane or a weather system, there's not gonna be a third party liability okay. claim that you can pursue. We know we had Many people contact us after the storm and say, you know, my neighbor's trees came and fell on my house. And as a general rule, if you're looking at a natural disaster, that's very unlikely to be a claim. Um, as we've discussed in the past, if there is a situation where your neighbor has a tree, um, especially after the hurricane where it was um, either rotten or had some dying aspects to it, hanging limbs, um, and if they have reasonable notice of that and fail to take action and then that tree or limb falls on your building, then there's, there's likely a claim there in that kind of scenario because it all boils back down to whether you took reasonable steps under the circumstances. And a reasonable person, if they know they have a dead limb hanging out of their tree, they need to do something about right. it. Right. So yeah. let's, let's hope that uh, we don't have uh, any more uh, issues with that, uh, with, uh, with what we shall uh, see um, in this coming storm. But, uh, you know, one thing that we are looking at with it is a, is a lot of potential rain. And that's something that you need to talk about with your insurance agent as well, because there is a difference coverage between flood and windstorm. Right. Yeah, flood damage is water that comes up from the ground or from a river or something like that that comes up rather than coming down from the sky. Um, that is a separate policy and you normally have to buy it from a completely separate company from what you're buying your, your 
normal perils type insurance, your normal homeowner's policy for. And if you don't have that extra coverage, even if, even if there's a hurricane associated with it, if, it's, if the actual damage to your house comes because the, you know, the drains in your neighborhood are, are, flo are flooded, mm -hmm. and um, at that point the water comes into your house and, it, and it's because of a flood, then you're not going to have coverage through your normal homeowner's policy. So even if you're not in a flood zone, there's a possibility that you're going to have that issue um, being outside of a flood zone. Those, right. those flood zone maps are not necessarily... Okay. That's very good and important to remember. Uh